Good day to you. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic day. Uh, my name is Prosper Tarowinga, and you're about to watch a video that we're going to record live on Facebook. Um, basically, talking about how your current peach or current sales peach should not be a one size fit all for your audience if you really want to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I'm um, just going to take this off. I see Luke Moroni has just tuned in. <clears throat> You're going to have to excuse me. I think I overdid it over the weekend and I came back with um, some man flu right there. So um, for those that are just tuning in, um, you know, obviously uh, I, I basically sit around here for 30 minutes and then we can discuss ways to make sure that you're branding your business, you're marketing your business and you're actually uh, reaching out to an audience that is willing and able to actually pay um, you uh, for your services. So, you know, basically, I do believe that every online business that's out there should be profitable and people should actually enjoy working in their business. And I also believe that if you're an online business, you should be able to create for and relate to the audience that you are going to be demanding money off of. I see Robert James has just tuned in. Thank you so much, um, you know, for your time so far. And um, hopefully you're having a fantastic uh, Tuesday. For those that are in Melbourne, I'm not sure any other states. It was a long weekend. I'm really hoping you had time to recuperate or if you're working, you did some meaningful work out there. So basically today we're talking about how to actually listen to your audience, how to measure your client's needs um, in order to make sure that your sales pitch is the exact fit. You're not just peddling products that people do not want or do not have a need for and then eventually losing out on sales losing out on trust losing out on referrals and losing out of recommendations which then means that your business is not um you know perpetual or goes through and through the one reason that a lot of people find it difficult to get repeat business from um you know their clients is because first of all they did not fulfill that um, client's needs or they are. They first off all started fulfilling their needs, but then eventually they dropped off, um, you know, the mark. So I'll be, I will be visiting all those aspects that actually help you um, make more money within your business with less struggle. All right. So I'm not quite sure if you guys are well versed with uh, George Barnard Shaw, a uh, prolific writer himself. Um, he specifies something like, you know, the only person that he believes is sensible in the, um, in the, um, you know, in, in his whole spectrum of people that he talks to is his personal tailor. You know why? Because he takes new measurements every time, um, he goes to see him. Now, what we don't realize is as, 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 as business providers is our clients are growing. Our clients needs are changing every single day. The moment they drive off with their car or out of the showroom or they drive off with their new and shiny product they just purchased from you. First of all, it starts losing value. And second of all, they automatically have more needs that they want pertaining to that particular product. So are we meeting our clients halfway? Are we actually servicing them with the products they really want? And also the after sales that then leads to referrals. I see Mike James has just tuned in. Sheridan, thank you so much for tuning in. And, um, um, I see James is also in the house. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Right. So today we're talking about how if you only have the one track mind or the one sort of sales speech, it's not going to suit everybody else that you're reaching out to. Even if you look at your fingers, no same finger is the same height. So why would you anticipate or expect that your audience or your customers are all going to be needing the same product that you are servicing, all right? So these days, it is actually advisable to have the mentality of a, a tailor. You know what I mean? Every time your customer comes in, before you talk about anything else, measure them. Maybe they've gained weight. Maybe they've lost weight. Maybe something they've grown or maybe something has changed within their body. Don't just assume just because your customers purchased from you last month, they still want the same product or somebody in the the same industry would want exactly the same sort of products that you're offering out there. So it is advisable to actually seek 
products for our customers, not to seek customers for our products. If you have it the other way, it will be difficult because like I said, people now anticipate a tailor-made service. People now anticipate a tailor-made product which actually suits them like a glove, all right? So you might be asking me, how do I get this mentality or is it expensive, um, is it not expensive to to not you know make factory presets in all of your commodities? I'll ask you one thing, um, one thing mainly. Say you are purchasing a car, and maybe you live only ten minutes away from the CBD. Now you might need more storage for um, you know you you might need a place to store that car when you're working or when you're parking it or you might need a place to store that car as soon as you you reach your 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 premises you know what i mean so that's yet another need that car sales people do not anticipate when they're selling you that car and then you might start resenting that car just because you can't house it or you don't have a garage for it or the distances that you're going to be driving to the city and you don't find parking for it just because it's big and 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 it doesn't suit out there so how do you then make sure that your products are those that are needed by your audience in the same way that um, a tailor measures what their customer needs every time they come around and how do you use that to your advantage that's basically what we're going to be talking around um you know today because it hinges on the next step of you actually getting referrals from your audience and it actually you know gets you repeat business from those that are going to be purchasing from you now in the comments there can you just type in the products that you actually sell what products do you um you know present to your audience anytime somebody knocks on your door if you're a business person what are you selling your your customers right this moment you know um you know at, at, at the end of the day we might have a process of selling um you know um our products we might have a process of you know having rapport with the people that come around to us but the first question is do our audience actually need the um, you know the, uh, the the products that we're we're we're, we're peddling to them? Now, Luke says uh, selling me. Uh, Sheridan says content for blogs. Um, Scott Woodrow says clothes. All right, let me take for specific example. Um, Clothes. Clothes is something that we all can relate to. All right. So with clothes, some people like revealing clothes. Some people, um, you know, um, like protective clothes. Some people like different types of clothes. Now, is it just fashionable clothes that you're dealing with? Or are you dealing with, um, you know, day-to-day -day clothes that people um, can purchase from you? Can you let me know there, Scott Woodrow? Because even if you've got the product in hand, the product in mind, you've got the communication, um, you know, you know, you've got the communication open with clothes. There's fashion that comes in every single um, year. So how are you keeping up with what your customers actually want at that particular time or what trends they're following or what their friends are wearing? Because I wouldn't wear things that my friends would laugh at me at a party about. So how are you finding that information and tailoring, um, you know, your, your customers needs as to what you're ordering into your shop instead of you just trying to sell what you have so that you can get read, um, you know, uh, you can get read um, of your, your, your clothing there. So looking at what Scott does, it actually really resonates with what I'm really trying to put across here. Let's say some people like wearing the classical attire. How are you bringing out your message to those people or those people that like to just change clothes just because it's in fashion or it's in season? How are you bringing that aspect, you know, of your business to those type of people? Maybe you've got a presentation for those people that like the classic type things that don't like change as much. And also, you should also remember, your other clients are the people that periodically want to change just so that they can keep up with the Joneses. So the next step is maybe you've crafted a sales pitch when somebody walks into your shop and you say, um, you know, Maybe you say um, something like, can I help you today? Or oh, we've got this. This is the latest trend that is in fashion. How do you 
convert those customers not knowing what type of a person they are or not knowing um you know what their needs are all right so that's what we're going to be talking uh to us today um, i mean on this show today because whatever you say from then on makes or breaks the sale some people are classic um you know uh, you know laggards some people are trend setters how do you know how do you distinguish between those two people both of them are your customers do you know what I mean? Both of them are your customers. Now, uh, Sheridan says ideas for basic wardrobe can be added to your different uh, looks and occasions. Um, I'm, I'm talking about when somebody walks into your shop or onto your website. How are you know how to, um, you know, sell to them? Blank clothing. What What is blank clothing? Is it something that that is non-seasonal? Is that what you're talking about? Because for most salespeople... This then becomes the, the most crucial part of them either making or breaking their sales process or actually selling anything that they're selling to their audience. Do you actually know what your audience needs when they walk um, across to you? You know, because because half of the people that I talk to, they have a set presentation. They have a set elevator pitch. They have one size fit all, um, you know, topic that they talk about. And then they anticipate everybody else to just follow through with that. You know, half of the time they think that, you know, whatever they're going to say is going to be the center of attention or is going to control the situation. But have you understood your customer's needs? You know? And at the end of the day, it is in the asking of questions, it is in the needs analysis, and it is in the really finding out or fact finding that you can actually showcase your expertise and you can also grasp all of your customers' problems. Because most customers don't come back and they will never tell you that something went wrong because you never fulfilled their need, you know? And, and you can avoid all of that by questioning, by not having a one size fit all, um, you know, uh, you know, presentation and really, really getting to the nitty gritty of finding out what your customer actually needs, because you can't be everything to everyone. Do you know what I mean? You cannot be everything to everyone. You know, every one of us here, yes, we're running a business, but sometimes sales are far and in between, um, you know, each other in as much as we actually show how desperate we are whenever somebody knocks on our door or whenever somebody comes onto our website, we really want to throw them at, and, you know, at them everything that we've got. Eventually we're losing that sale. You know, how do you then get prepared for when your customers come in and they ask for certain uh, requirements pertaining to your services? Maybe they don't want the whole full menu. They want an a la carte piece or they just want small bite sized things that they can actually afford, you know. But obviously, as we all know, you know, getting the sale means that you have to take a little bit of measure, find out exactly is your service needed, is your service fulfilling your customer's needs. And your goal is to actually create an exact fit for your customer, an exact fit that actually means that product is tailor made for them, even if you're giving that exact same product to 100 other people. That's what people need these days. Are you able or are you doing that within your business? Do you know what I mean? Because if you're not tailor making these services or providing these products as if the, this is the only thing that you have that your customer is going to get, it's going to be difficult for your customers to return or to refer your work um, in as much as they don't feel like you're going, you know, the extra mile. Do you know what I mean? Is this something that is unique to your business? Is it something they can get elsewhere? How are you actually doing your business in as much as they will come back for more? Those are the questions you should be asking yourself all the time. Who really needs my product and my service? Yeah? What problems, what frustrations, and what shortcomings, um, you know, and, and, and what sort of desires do my products and services address? You're not just selling, um, you know, software. You're not just selling clothes. What are you addressing to that client's needs that no one else can do down the road, that no one else can do if they keep searching? That's the only way that makes you unique. That's the only way that makes you remarkable. You know what I mean? Why exactly are people paying you? Because if you can answer those questions, it's easy because those are the same questions that your audience is asking themselves as well. 
Why should I buy from Tendai? Why should I buy from um, you know Duncan Masaka? Why should I buy from Sheridan? You know? And half of the time we are afraid to ask ourselves those questions because we're afraid we might chase away our potential customers. But eventually, if we're not answering those questions for them, if we're not answering those questions for them, somebody else will be. You know? Because although a sales conversation, no matter how it starts or whether it starts from a funnel or whether it starts from a lead magnet or whether it starts from a webinar, it should never be about, you know, what you think your customers should like, you know, and don't be afraid to maybe, um, you know, give your opinion where it's appropriate, but people have their own needs. Why are they coming to you and not coming down to Sally, you know, down the road? Because if a customer asks for your thoughts, you tell them your, your, your opinion based on your experience. They already know what they want basically half of the time. Or if they don't, you just guide them towards what it is that they want. Because if you try and impart what you think they want, they retract and they reject your message completely. Then you wouldn't even know where to begin to gain that rapport again. So include, you know, the reasoning behind maybe your comments or whatever it is that you're putting across. This is where customers actually expect to be benefiting from you because you know what you're talking about and it validates their opinion. When you start seeing the world in their own eyes, when you start saying it in their own, um, you know, voice and in their own words, then you're making a transaction that they feel like they've made that decision themselves. You know, a lot of people that are new to business or to sales, you know, they, they, they enter every sort of sales conversation with the belief that any feat is better than no feat at all. You'd rather turn away customers if they're not a perfect match for you, you know, and, and this is not the case if you're, if you really, I mean, if you really want your business to be profitable and enjoyable, make sure you are actually servicing customer needs. You're not just selling products out there. You're actually helping people by helping them. You know, if you're well, sort of, um, well, let me hear from Stewie Msarabas. Did he say, how are you doing? Um, that's real marketing strategies, pushing your product or services to your target market. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, so when you become experienced and when you start really servicing, you know, your, 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 your customers, it is actually your position to disqualify customers. You know, not everyone is going to be a perfect fit for your services. Make sure whatever you are selling to people is something that will give you a perfect review and they would want to buy more from you. And when you know you can't provide what that customer needs, Tell them, be honest, be upfront, be, be, and you can actually refer them to somebody else, maybe within your niche or somebody who can provide that service. Because maybe next time that person you refer them to will also do the same and reciprocate that for you, you know? So if appropriate, try and make sure that you're just taking on the work that you can physically handle yourself. Because some people will take on whatever work and then eventually cannot be able to satisfy that customer's needs and demands. And then eventually you now create sour relationships which were not even needed in the first place. You know? And Sheridan says people like to work with people with integrity. Well, absolutely. Because you're going to have to be doing some sort of work in order to fulfill that customer's needs. You know, if you're a service provider and you, you've got an ongoing uh, commitment with them, or even if it's just a, a once-off transaction, maybe that person does not actually fit that product. And guess what? People have the liberty to actually leave a review these days. And one bad review would actually cost you a lot more business down the, down the, down the track. Now, was that worth that $100? Was that worth that $200 that you really just wanted to put across? So that's the reason why one peach is not, you know, going to satisfy different loads of people. Even if you've got the one product, tailor make it so that the customer actually understands what you're going to be offering them and how you're going to be delivering it to them. And they actually acknowledge and you set their expectations so that they don't feel like they're being ripped off. 
you know? And at the end of the day, like what Sheridan says, you work with people with integrity. If you can't service somebody, don't just take on the work just because there's money, you know, money at the end of the day. If it's appropriate, tell your customers you can't help him. And with word of mouth advertising, it will start working, you know, good for you because integrity is what people are looking for these days. You know, because at the end of the day, your customers want you to remember their name. If you really want to make long term relationships with your customers, they want you to remember their name. They want you to remember their needs. And they want you to constantly be checking up on them to see if you're still needed within their business. Because a good tailor remembers your name. A good butcher remembers your name. A good person at the market remembers your name. A good tailor remembers your name and your measurements. You know? So before, before you start any sales calls or any funnel processes, make sure you find out, find out exactly what your what what solution your prospects are 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 using right now and are they going to be using in the future and if what you have to offer is actually needed you know and this is especially true if you're dealing with maybe it's an existing um, customer that you already have be in constant check to see if your service is still you know satisfying them as it was right from the start because some people might just leave you without telling you or giving you any feedback why they're leaving. So you want to use some sort of, you know, maybe customer relationship management software to be tracking all these details. I mean, you can't remember everything. How many of you guys use a proper CRM for their business? Can you type in the comments there if you actually use a proper CRM for your business? Because then if you're not then you're missing out on how to actually nurture those customers because it's easier to get business from people that you've already served before than from trying to get new business from other people. You know? So when you're taking in any new customers, use a lot of aggressive listening. You know? Active listening. And find out, listen what's being said in between the lines. Because, you know, when you're actively listening, it gives you a chance to actually expand on any conversation that is being, you know, said. And you can clarify and, and, and you can, you know, find out the real meaning of words um, of what the prospect is actually referring to. Because if you're taking a prospect that was working, um, you know, with another business, they already have perceived expectations as to what they should expect you to run your business like. You need to set all of those expectations, um, you know, right, right at, at, at a medium sort of level so that everybody understands what's in it for them to get into this, um, you know, uh, business transaction that you're going to be uh, getting into. But if you're not listening and you're just really looking towards closing that sale, you will miss out on the important information of what your customer really, really needs from your service or your product. You know, so active listening, you know, I, I, I know you, you understand what it is, but it, it, it means that you're an empathetic human being and, and you've got a strong emotional state because nobody wants to work with people that are not strong emotionally because if anything happens, you are in charge of their business and they can't just let that off to somebody else who is a flaky individual. That then gives... The, the, your, your customer, the trust that you're the person to actually handle their specific needs. So that's why I'm saying if you've got a one pitch deck or your website is just speaking, you know, it's just static in such a way that it's not really addressing the needs of what your potential customers want, that's the reason why it's not converting. Or if you're pitching to people, um, you know, person to person, or if you're using a funnel, whichever way, you really need to have a clear understanding of what the majority of some of your customers want and speak as if you're speaking to an individual, not like you're speaking to a whole, um, you know, crowd. And being in tune with your prospects, nonverbal communication, it actually allows you to recognize whether you're losing their attention or, or, or you're, you're gaining um, an insight as to what actually makes them tick. Because if you are not connecting with people at a humane or personal level, you're missing out on all the sales that you possibly can make from that person. You know, so everybody has assumptions when they meet you. 
You need to clarify those assumptions. You know, you already have assumptions yourself about that, that prospect or what it is that they might need by coming to you. You know? Now, uh, Sheridan says, using phrases like, so you prefer to use, and they confirm or revise for you. Absolutely, because you, if you're, <coughs> I was working with a, <clears throat> with a landscaper outside, and he said something that was very profound. He says, measure twice and then cut once. So if it means you have to ask those probing questions and clarify their assumptions, you want to do that before you just impose on, on what you think is absolutely correct for your, for your prospect there. Do you know what their needs are? Do you know what their wants are? You know? You know? You do know what they, the amount of budget um, you know, they have for a solution or whatever it is that they're searching for you to provide for them. How about the timing? Is this, are they just making an inquiry or do they want to move by end of business today or do they want to move by end of month? Are you specific about those timings? Are they ready to buy today? Because if you, you know, you, you assume or you've got any preconceived ideas, um, you know, about what your customer needs, you might be far off. Just ask those questions and don't predict for your customers because like I said earlier on, not everyone is the same. So you are missing out on sales just because maybe you're not probing enough. You're not asking the right questions. Question every assumption. And don't just have a one size fits all uh, mechanism in order to close sales. You know, even things that you think are silly, silly questions, ask those questions. Because that then gives your audience or your, your customer the trust that you're actually listening and you're actually going to be looking after them or taking good care of them. You know? Because an incorrect assumption is the number one reason for a, a store or the end of a sale. I also heard that those people that play golf, um, you know, if you're... If you hit a golf ball and it's not on target and you miss by maybe two degrees, by the time it gets to the 18 hole, it's gone further, like 180 degrees. So zero in on the exact needs of what your customer is looking for. Because once you're there, even if you don't make a, a sale with them, if they know that you have actually, uh, you know, exhausted everything that they need, um, you know, to know and you need to know about them, even if you don't make a transaction, if you ask for a referral from them, they'll actually give you one. You know why? Because they know you absolutely care. You know? So half of the time, we're missing out on sales just because we're not really specific on who needs our products and why do they need it from us. And then once you've gotten that, you will be in a position to say, hey, Mr. Prospect, I've got this for you because your company is, the, in, is in this particular state, or I've got this for you because you're going through this in your life as a coach. I think this will be the perfect time for you to take on one of my products. Not going out to say, I've got this, um, you know, this course, I need to sell it to people. That's why a lot of people are being frustrated with their businesses because they've got the one thing they're trying to bring customers to instead of looking for customers that are willing and able to actually purchase their, their products. All right. So today was just, um, you know, a, a reflection on the things that quite a considerable amount of people may be asking as to how do I know that people actually want my services? How do I know that people actually want, um, you know, what, I, what I've got to offer? All I got to say is one sales pitch does not fit all, you know, measure your client's needs and make sure that your sales pitch has the right fit for whatever it is that, um, you know, your customers are looking for and tailor make your sales presentation if you really want to make that sell. Now, one last thing, Mike says, I really like the example you used with the tailor. He always measures before he serves or sells. We have to be specific and tailor our services and products to our customers. Absolutely. If you look at your, um, your coach's website right now, it still says copyright 2014. How many things have changed throughout all the time? So constantly be measuring what your customers may need. Constantly be evaluating if they still need the things that you're selling. And also be constantly evaluating yourself as 
a business person? Am I still in the same capacity to serve those things that my prospects need? All right. That way you will be in such a position that you can be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Now, Mike says, thank you again for sharing yourself so graciously, brother Prosper. Thank you. And Sheridan says, and remember that the most important measurement is the inside. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that, but uh, I've seen my, my, my suit guy, you know, measuring the inside of the, the leg. Anyway, thank you so much. I really hope that... Um, this message, even though it was all over the place, um, I, I, you, you really got something out of it. And if you have any further questions, let's continue this conversation at the bottom. Those that were participating, thank you so much for your time. Bye for now.